بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In these corona times, in these corona days, welcome to Norway Listen to this and you will be shocked This is crazy There's a place in Norway where they have implemented a new law And this law is only restricted to this area in Norway This law states If you shake the hand of someone You risk prison up to two years And the same applies to giving a hug Okay, take this into account A couple of years ago I had a debate with the former Minister of Integration And she wanted to shake my hand And instead of shaking her hand I gave her flowers and I explained to her in a kind, beautiful way that due to some reasons, obviously because of my religion, I was not able to have physical contact with her and to make up for that, I brought her flowers. But she totally, totally just wasted my explanation. Threw it in a bin. She wouldn't accept. Started calling me things that, yeah, you discriminate women and this and that. Last year, there was another incident. The Crown Prince of Norway visited a masjid and he wanted to greet the people or shake their hands. There was a sister over there and he stretched out his hand and she didn't shake his hand. And obviously she, 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 respectfully, she respectfully greeted him with putting her hand on her heart the same way that I did. This incident went viral in Norway. Obviously the prince, he was a nice guy, he understood the nice gesture and he did the same thing. But people are more like, like racist people or Islamophobes. They were making this case about this. Ah, oh, look at this woman, Muslim woman disrespecting the prince. And there was another incident. A Muslim man who worked as a teacher, he lost his job because he couldn't shake the hand. Subhanallah. If you're a teacher, you don't really need to shake anyone's hand. But they took his, they took his chance to work because he wouldn't shake the hand. And there was another incident here in Norway. A Muslim man applied for a job at the post office. He sent a text message to the one conducting the interview. He explained to her that he can't shake her hand due to religious restrictions and this and that. And she replied back, the interview is cancelled. We, we can't hire anyone like you. Something like that. So the irony of the whole thing is, subhanallah, subhanallah. They made this huge thing about you have to shake someone else's hand. You are not respecting people if you don't shake their hand. You, there, there's no other way to show respect to someone unless you physically touch them. Now look at what's happening. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Now they have not only made it a recommendation not to shake someone else's hand, they've actually made it illegal illegal in this place in Norway and not only that the punishment you will get is like the same punishment someone will get for raping someone if you rape someone in Norway you get you can get two years of prison now if you, if two people voluntarily shake each other's hand you can get up to two years of prison look at the irony subhanallah now someone might say okay this is due to health reason and this and that and you guys, you Muslims, you don't shake their, uh, shake their hand because of you guys subjugate the other, the, the other gender. Or this. this is all nonsense. This is all nonsense. In Islam, we don't shake the hand of the opposite gender because that's what our religion teaches us. As simple as that. It applies to men, it applies to women. Women don't, sh don't shake the hand of uh, non-related men and men don't shake the hands of non-related women and this is our religion nothing more nothing less it's to respect our own spouses that our physical contact is only restricted to the one whom we love and will spend our lives with and our close family members obviously our sisters our mothers and this and that but the main point here is it's not about how good your reason is for us this is a good enough reason you might not find it a good enough reason while you might say that while you might say that okay to avoid this virus that is a good enough reason well what they teach here in norway is that religion is a private matter if religion is a private matter then why are you interfering in my religiosity come on 
Why are you interfering? For me, this is important, just as important as not spreading this disease. So respect each other's religion, have a respect that other people have other values than you have, and for them this might mean something. And there are other ways to show respect. And another irony with this whole thing, when this virus started to spread in Norway, the main hospital in the capital of Norway, they put out a post on Facebook that said that there are alternative ways to greet, greet each other with respect or something like that. And they showed the exact same way that I greeted this Norwegian minister, like putting my hand on my heart and this sister as well, the same thing she did. Now suddenly this is respectful. Come on. Stop playing these games. Stop playing these games. Accept that people have different ways of showing respect and accept that people have different values. And another irony with this whole thing. And when the police officer was asked about this and he tried to give this explanation. Yeah, it's, it's really and he meant to, to uh, we're, not, we're not going to arrest people if you see someone shaking their hands or giving their hugs, hugs. We're going to explain to them if they insist on doing that. Yeah, it's really meant to, yeah, I need to, let's just say it out right. Let's just say it out as a preventive measure, as a preventive measure. Doesn't that sound a little bit familiar? Every single time a Muslim talks about the punitive laws of Islam, the Islamic law, in any shape or form and he explains it it is meant as a preventive measure and in reality is not even going to be implemented because there's so strict criteria then these guys they, they, they flip they turn around now you guys are barbaric you guys are extreme and this and that and and they themselves have implemented a law for just touching someone if you just take the hand of someone you risk a punishment of two years in prison. Anyways, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you imagine investing $100 and getting 70,000 in return? Or investing 1,000 and getting 700,000 in return? Brothers and sisters, we're establishing a masjid with a da'wah and tarbiyah center. And if you donate for this noble cause, Allah will give you up to 700 times more in return on the Day of Judgment. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 261, The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like the seed of grain which grows seven spikes, and in each spike is a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies His reward for whomsoever He wills, and Allah is all-encompassing and all-knowing. This means that in the hereafter, you will not only get your donation back, but you will have it multiplied up to 700 times. And in addition, you will get the reward for every salah that is prayed in this masjid five times a day, 365 days a year. Every Jum'ah that is attended by hundreds or thousands of people. All those children learning and memorizing the words of Allah. Every single person who breaks their fast in the month of Ramadan in the masjid. You get a slice of that reward coming straight to your scale of good deeds. On the day when our deeds will be counted, imagine having all these prayers of the people on your side. Brothers and sisters, please help us build this masjid because without your support, we cannot do it. Click the button in this video and secure your part of the reward, inshallah. And please share this video, it's absolutely free and get the reward for everyone that donates because of your share.